so we've been working on a address book project and I have the the uh, files here and I've been uh, looking at them. I didn't like the mushroom background. I felt like it was a little bit off brand for Coda Foundry and I wanted to change it. So I wasn't sure how to change it. So I decided to ask Bobby to jump on a live share with me and he's going to change it for me. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to show you a demo of this. We're going to start live share by clicking this button up here. And once it's running, you can see here, I'm going to go and copy this link and I'm going to send it to Bobby. I'm going to send it on Teams. I could send it on anything. I could email it to him, um, text it, whatever, doesn't matter. And he's going to basically grab that link and join me on live share here. Okay, Kevin, so I've got your live share link here, and what I'm going to do here, I'm in Visual Studio 2022 here, and um, I'm going to join a live share session by hitting the file button and drop down here. And um, I'm going to just paste that link um, that Kevin sent me, and that's it. Now watch what happens. I'm in a, a project right now, a um, little project I'm working on, and it's going to go over to Kevin's machines and then pull in the code from his machine and stick it into my instance in Visual Studio. Check it out. So kind of neat. Um, so now it's changed out my project. And so I can look at um, my solution here. And I've got my classic MVC here and I've got the WW root, everything you would expect in here. So I've got the full code base here. So now that I'm joined, I've also got this um, live share window. So let me show you that and show you kind of what's going on here. And I can show the participants, me um, and Kevin. And notice here, Kevin is now going to run the app. And let's watch what happens when we run the app. Yeah, I can run the app from my side. So I'm going to click the little app run button here. And it's going to run that. Okay, that is running here. And so I'm going to go back over to my live share window here and you can see now I have a, a server here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to open this up in a browser window. And now what it's doing is it's going over to Kevin's instance of ISS to run it. And um, there are some issues here with it given us an SSL certificate, but in this case, we don't care. I'm just gonna go um, proceed to localhost unsafe, which is fine. This is just for development. And check it out. So now I have the app running on my machine from the web server instance on Kevin's machine. So what I can do here is I can um, go into Visual Studio and uh, uh, in this Solution Explorer, I can open up the files and edit them directly. So I'm going to open up this class style CSS here. And I know where I put this in here. I put it on a CSS tag and I think it's called PG background. And right here, I just have a background URL. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it. So I think it would be cool if we watch you watch me change it, Kevin. All right. So I know the name of this. It's um, Abstract Spheres. That PNG. Let me just check to make sure I spelled that correctly. I'm going to look into a WW root here and make sure that's what it was called. So it was Abstract Spheres. S P H E R E S. Years. So, let me make sure again. There we go. So I can save that now. And what happened on your end? It instantly changed. I know. Isn't that cool? Now, my end, it did not. So I think if I refresh, maybe it'll change. And if it doesn't, but there it goes, it does change. So what we're seeing there is there is a CSS hot reload that's built into ASP.NET. And so this allowed uh, Kevin's server to recognize the change and it would refresh the page for him. Now other changes don't work this way. 
some of the changes if we're changing UIs, um, we would have to initiate the hot reload on Kevin's side, even though if I say change like an input label or something like that, those changes would be have to be initiated through hot reload. And Kevin simply would have his hot reload set to say, um, execute on save. I think you can show them where that setting is. Can you, Kevin? Uh, yeah, I can. It is right here. It's under the hot reload. It is a hot reload on file save. You just check this right here. And then when I saved it, it would automatically hot reload. Yeah. And then hot reload on your side. Now on my side, I would have to again refresh it. But what that hot reload is doing is actually pushing the changes to the web server. So when I'm changing code remotely, I'm just changing the code base. And the only thing that will be affected immediately on save would be something like a CSS file. But things that have to be compiled, Kevin's going to have to initiate the hot reload by hitting the save button on his end. And then those changes would be pushed to the server. And then I could refresh them and see the change on my end. So that is live share. I think it's great for people that, um, for companies like ours, boot camps, helping students out, but definitely for um, collaborations between um, people that are maybe far apart, or you just want to don't want to walk down the hall and go to the other cube. You just want to stay at your desk and work on your stuff. You can help people out. Um, definitely for consulting companies, getting to remote code bases. Notice this also works with GitHub and everything else you would expect. You can have shared Git repos that we can pull down, but live share can change the way that we can collaborate on software projects and even debug together, which is kind of cool. Anyway, I hope this helps. Good luck and keep coding.